<laughs> no, that is correct. Okay, so now I'm going to bring you in a little closer just to show you how to install a video card. This, these pins right over here, which don't touch it, same thing with the CPU, the grease from your finger, fingertips can mess things up. So that is going to slide right in here, okay? And then there is a little retention mechanism right here. See that little guy that pushes down? Okay, that snaps in place as soon as that gets in there. So let me just show you real quick. Now just watch this. Okay, so now that it is in the slot, you just push it in. Okay, and if you watched real close, you will you saw that just go click, snap into place. Let me zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to push it down to remove the card. Okay, and now I'm going to push it back in and watch it close. Saw how that worked? Okay. And then the way I removed it, I just pushed it down and pulled the card out. Okay, now that that's in, we're going to go ahead and screw it in place on the back. So we'll just turn it around again. Now we'll see right here. Let me lower the camera a little bit. Okay, we can see right here, the holes don't perfectly align. Okay, I'm going to lift it up. And you see how you can see the light through there? Now that, now they're, whoops. Now they're aligned, so now I'm just going to screw that in. And I do the bottom one first because that one is a solid hole. You'll notice how this one on the card itself, it's cut off. Okay, so I just screwed it in lightly there. And now I'll go back and tighten up the bottom one. So there you go. You've just installed a video card, okay? And now we're gonna go ahead and install my PCIe SSD. Just like a regular SSD or the solid state drives, this is a PCIe one. It does not connect to the SATA ports. It just connects to the PCIe slot. And let's see. It's not going to be this one, this one, or this one. So it's going to be this right over here. So I'll go ahead and unscrew that one. Okay. And just pull the slot cover out. Okay. So one thing you'll notice, this is not a full PCIe like the video card was. The video card, this was a little bit longer. Now, this is a by four PCIe. Now you'll notice there is a by four slot here. This is a by 16, but it'll still fit in and work perfectly fine. So we'll just put it in there. There you go. Just push it in, really simple. And then like we did before, we come around the back And screw this in. Now, you might be running SLI or Crossfire, so you might need to, you know, use a few of the other PCIe slots, but this is just the way I have my personal machine set up. Okay, and now that we have all that done, I don't have any additional cards, so I'm going to go ahead and put this back in there. Not gonna tighten it all the way just yet. All right, there we go. 
Now we've installed a video card and a PCIe SSD. So now we have to install the SSDs. So the way that Cougar took care of this is actually very nice. They have a tray here and a tray here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unscrew this guy. Okay, take the entire tray out. And just to get ahead of myself, I'm gonna go ahead, take this tray out also. And then the way these install is you're going to want to put the SATA portion towards the rear. And then you'll notice on the bottom of your SSD, there's gonna be a hole here, a here, here, and here that aligns with these holes as well. So now I'm just gonna put it down like that. Again, this is in the rear. Just align those holes. Now you see they're aligned. And one by one, screw them in. All right, that's one. All right, now that we have that, we'll just tighten those screws. All right, those are tightened. Now, all we need to do is just slide this, or the, should I say this little bracket here into there that locks it in place. And now we just screw it in. You could do it by hand. You don't need a screwdriver for this one. And that's it. Same will go for here. I'm gonna skip this for right now because it's the same thing. Now I'm gonna go to something, even though I have more hard drives to install and SSDs, there's no space in here. See, so there's no more space for SSDs. Again, unless right down here, but you can't put them anywhere here. There's no spot or anywhere down there. Now, what Cougar did was along the back, they have some more trays. So here's two 3.5 inch trays that double as, I'm sorry, two 3.5 inch bays, trays that double as 2.5 inch bays. So you can put a standard mechanical hard drive, screw it in there, or you can install an SSD right here. But, now they're not only limiting you to these two, you also have two 2.5 inch bays right over here, so you can put SSDs there. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I'm gonna go ahead and insert, install one, uh, a hard drive on this bay, and on this bay, and then I'm going to install two additional SSDs here. Or actually, yeah, two additional ones. Okay, so I just unscrewed that single screw, that thumb screw. Now the hard drive, much like the SSD, has holes here that match up with the holes here. Okay, so I'm just going to put it flat like this and then align the holes just like that and screw them in. This one only has four, but they give you two additional for, you know, maybe different types of hard drives. Now these screws are gonna be the same screws you use for the SSD. The little rounded off ones, okay? The screw that I'm gonna use for the mechanical hard drives is the rounded off one, the same one I use for the, for the motherboard. And by the way, I did forget to mention, or maybe I didn't, I don't remember, but, so these screws, you'll notice, it's a round head, but then it has what looks like a washer, although it's not a washer. Uh, those I use for the SSDs. All right, I just wanted to let you know. So now I'm going to be installing this guy.
All right. And like we did with the SSD on the tray, you notice these little guys sticking out. They're going to go into these holes here. And then afterwards, that's it. It's installed. So they did a, a good job there. And now I'm going to skip this one. I'll do that on my own, but it's going to be the same thing. And I'll just do one more of the SSDs since it is in the back. Just a little bit different. All right, with the Patriot Ignite. Again, match it up. we did before match this up right over here I like their implementation the way they did that so all right now you see how that's put together now the last piece of hardware I'm going to show you how to install is the power supply and like the rest of the system installing the power supply is a breeze Though the way they implemented it is a little slight bit different than most are used to. I'm actually used to this way, so it doesn't really surprise me too much. So at the very bottom of the case goes the power supply. All right. And like most of the power supplies, the Cooler Master Silent Pro Gold 1200 watt has a fan at the bottom. And Cougar down here also has another one of those mesh grills. This one is a slight bit different the way it, it comes off, but I'll show you that one a little bit later on. Okay, so as for right now, I'm going to feed the cables through back here first. This is a semi-modular 1200 watt not totally modular but it still works great I've used it for a number of years and before you complain a friend gave this to me so no I did not buy it but if I wanted to I wanted to I don't need 1200 watts but you don't really use 1200 watts you use whatever your power your computer is going to take okay so now the, the different, the odd part is, I'm going to move it around here, is that, if you remember, I just slid the power supply in, in place from the back. Now, how, how's it going to lock in place? Well, they have this guy. This is the power supply bracket. So that goes right here and screws into your motherboard. Now, you may have to fiddle around with it a little bit to get it perfect. So that one's not gonna work for me. So now I just flip it around. Let's see, does this one work? That one works. Let's see. Perfect, okay. So now we're gonna grab the power supply screws. The power supply screws are a little bit different than the others. First off, they have that kind of head okay and these are they lock in place they're a little bit bigger than the rest as well so now what we do is first we screw the frame in now that we know which way it's going to fit
Okay, and then using the same screws, we're gonna screw the power supply to the frame. So you notice that there's a hole here, 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 and here for the frame for the power supply. And again, that's called the PSU bracket or power supply bracket. All right, so now you've built a computer. Let me zoom out. So you have a hard drive here, a mechanical hard drive there, an SSD here, spinner around. Oh, and of course, you have the power supply down here. Then you have an SSD right over here. PCIe SSD right over here, a video card. You have four sticks of RAM totaling to 16 gigs. You have the liquid cooling unit in the front, though it can go on the top depending how you install it. The CPU under that and under everything you have the motherboard. I'm going to go ahead and install the other SSDs and the other hard drives and then come back to you to show you the finished hardware build but then we have to go to the cable management or the cabling itself. So I'll be right back. All right, so we have everything installed. We have one, two SSDs, the video card, the PCIe card, the CPU, the liquid cooling unit. Along the back, we have the power supply. One, SS, one SSD here, and then two mechanical drives. One terabyte and one terabyte. I really need to get a four terabyte. That way I only have one mechanical drive. But anyway, these are older drives. So now we're done with the hardware part. I've just shown you how to build a PC, or maybe I gave you some pointers, or if anything, I hope I helped you, you know, uh, maybe figure out something for if you had those uh, 90 degree angle with a CEB or an EATX board, uh, the shorter boards, you won't have that problem. So a standard ATX, micro ATX, MITX, micro ITX, I should say, you won't have that issue at all. Um, it's just with the EATX or the CEB boards. All right. And they don't mention EATX on their site. They mention CEB, but this particular board actually has a lower uh, measurement in width than a standard CEB board. So it's a bit odd, but anyway, um, they probably just didn't take into account the 90 degree um, ports. So anyway, now let's get to some cabling.